Once again, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, this is my second attempt, but I think now it will go fine, and I have to apologize for that because this was uh, my, uh, my problem, not the problem of, of those who are running this session here. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, <clears throat> um, fortunately, I'm the second one because the first presentation was such a nice one showing you the prevalence of the chronic venous insufficiency as well as a chronic venous uh, leg ulcer, that I will be trying only to, to settle the scene for indication for vascular assessment. Uh, as you see here, this is the plan of our session. In fact, we had already one presentation, but the others will follow that what I am going to present to you. If you look into this table, what you see here, these are the common types of the ulcers. And as you see here, we can divide them on the diabetic, ischemic, pressure, and the venous. The interesting thing is, if you look here into the pathophysiology of these ulcers, then suddenly you find that three of them out of four have a vascular origin. And this is really very important, and I'm trying to popularize the term which is a vascular-derived chronic wounds. And if you see here, these and these are related to the arterial side, and obviously the venous leg ulcer is directly related to the venous hypertension. So let's look at this and try to understand how it's happened that the venous leg ulcer is going to develop. Uh, we have heard already, but just to, to, to repeat a little bit, that the venous leg ulcers accounts of 40% of all lower extremity ulcerations. What that means, that this is really a social problem in every hour, not only European countries. Uh, as you see here, we made a very big epidemiological study in 2003 published in Phlebology, and we found that in Poland, we have a very high rate of the venous leg ulcer, 1.5%. In comparison to that, what you find in Europe, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, and even in US, which is 1.0. But if we look into the venous system of the leg, what you see here, in fact, we have a three systems, peripheral, perforators, and the deep one. And obviously, if everything goes wrong in these systems, finally, the patient can develop such a very bad ulceration. How we can approach this? Obviously, if we have that ulceration, we can look at this at the local point, only assess the venous ulceration. But obviously, there is still something behind that. And what is there? The venous hemodynamics. And if you look into the field of the diabetic food, you know that the people who are very much involved in the diabetic food, if they see something like that, they have a certain a guidelines how to treat these patients. And it is very well known as a toe and flow. So far, we don't have a sort of strategy like for the diabetic food for the venous ulceration. So today I would like to propose something what should really sound like this, ulceration and hemodynamic examination. And obviously, ulceration means a local treatment, which I am not going to talk today because that is going to be in another session, a main topic, but I will focus only on hemodynamic uh, examination. What is hemodynamic examination? It's mainly flow, and pressure. But obviously, there is something additional to that, which is anatomy, because it would be very nice to know where is the impaired flow or the higher pressure. Obviously, we need to have some methods to examine all these parts. What are these methods? Starting from the non-invasive, that is duplex scan, platysmography, ambulatory venous pressure is already invasive, phlebography, MRV, and angio-CT. And if we look now and place a certain dots, what sort of examination we can perform and what sort of information we can get from this uh, procedure, from that method, what you can find here, the pressure can be only assessed by the invasive method, which is ambulatory venous pressure. Till now, we do not have a non-invasive method which will, in fact, uh, assess the pressure. But the pressure is really important even probably more than flow in terms of developing the venous leg ulcer. 
So let's speak about the pressure. How we measure the pressure? We have to stick the needle into the dorsal vein, and in the standing position, usually in the normal subject, the pressure is around 60. If we walk, it drops, never to zero. It's usually to 20 millimeters of mercury. And then, when we stop, it goes slowly to the range which was at the beginning. And obviously, if you lie down, the pressure is close to zero. That means on the level of the right heart. And if you will be standing on the hands, then it will be below. It's not a negative because we don't have something with a negative pressure, but it will be below that what we have in the heart. But this is for the normal subject. How it will look if we have a patient with a huge varicose vein, and especially when the pressure will be high because uh, the patient will be after, let's say, uh, the obstruction of the venous, uh, uh, deep venous system or uh, uh, destruction of the valves and the other possibility. Then the story is different. In standing position, this pressure can be much higher. The highest pressure we can observe in my department was 200 millimeters of mercury in the standing position. Then, when we start to walk, obviously, the pressure will drop, but never to the normal level. Sometimes the drop is very, very small. And again, this is when we walk. When we stop, then the hydrostatic pressure will go immediately high again to the level of 200 or something like that millimeters of mercury. The rest of our positions is very similar to that what we observe in the normal subjects. So we can say that that small drop and then increase to the same high level as the, in the beginning, it is a producing a very uncomfortable situation for the leg. This slide is, in fact, summarizing everything what I just said, that you have a normal here with a slope going up very, sl very slowly, then a certain insufficiency in certain uh, systems of the venous uh, system of the lab. If we have the obstruction, even if you walk, you can register the high pressure than that which is in the standing position. Do we have a proof that pressure has relation with the uh, uh, venous leg ulcer, yes. A very nice study by Nicolaides showed us that with increase of the pressure, we, we also see the increase in the incidence of the ulceration. So that means that the pressure is a key factor for developing venous leg ulcer. And as you can see here, venous hypertension is uh, the result of these, these different possibilities. And if we develop the venous hypertension, then obviously that hypertension can cause the first skin damage and later venous leg ulcer. So we were speaking till now about the pressure. What about the flow and obviously the anatomy? Uh, the best instrument, the best method to assess the venous system is a duplex scan. Obviously, we, you can have a huge machines like this one, smaller than them, and nowadays we have even small portable uh, equipment which can allow us to assess the flow and anatomy. European Journal of Vascular Endovascular Surgery and the European Society for Vascular Surgery published in 2006 a very nice document showing how we should examine the patient with uh, varicose veins of the venous problem of the lower legs. And as you can see, the patient has to be in the standing position with the bending leg, that one which we are going to examine, and the, the, the doctor or the uh, the person who is examining, having a probe in his hand, going up and down and assessing the reflex and obviously the anatomy. And as you can see here, based on that, we can assess the different veins of the leg, we can assess the anatomy, and then obviously we can assess the, uh, the, hemodyne, uh, the, the flow, that means the reflex, the presence of reflex or absence of the reflex. And that is very helpful in terms of assessment, what sort of flow will influence the, uh, the, the incoming problem with the venous leg ulcer. The other possibilities are phlebography, which is an invasive technique, ascending, descending, and just to tell you, the most important thing right now is to observe phlebography like a film, not just a static picture like this one, but if we observe like the typical coronarography or arteriography, phlebography just gives you much more information. 
a very new uh, techniques like angio CT, angio MRI, developed by Jean Francois Hull, gives us even additional possibilities, but again, only assess the anatomy. We still do not have a chance to assess the flow and the pressure with these methods. So, to summarize that, non invasive techniques, as you can see here, is the duplex photoplethysmography or plethysmography, invasive listed here. But we have to remember, when we assess the venous system, we have to always assess the ABPI, which is the ankle brachial pressure index, or especially if this uh, ulceration is huge, a toe brachial pressure index. What is this? This is the places where we measure the, uh, the pressure, and we have to always use the, um, the Doppler to measure the pressure. And as you can see here on the left arm, then this is on the dorsal pedis, this is posterior tibial, because we always take the highest value, then we divide it and we assess the ABPI, which is one here, which is normal on that side, and ABPI 0.63 on the left. What that means for us? That the patient with the venous leg ulcer on the left side, having ABPI lower than 0.6, cannot have the same compression therapy that it is on the healthy leg. And we have to really remember that. The diagnosis is moderate PAD, peripheral arterial disease, in the left leg. So, in conclusion, if you have a sick feet, what you have to do? If this is a diabetic, diabetic foot, then this is toe and flow. If this is the venous leg ulcer, it should be ulceration and hemodynamic examination. And I think that we will come after this session to the point that we should examine all patients with venous leg ulcers with hemodynamic assessment. This is a very crucial model then to pursue with a local treatment and getting a good results in the treatment of venous leg ulcer. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Javier, for a very nice presentation and setting the scene indeed for how to make a proper investigation and think of all the modalities and all the physiological things that can go wrong and what we should think about.